Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before him now with reverence and fear. In him no sin is found. We stand on holy ground. Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor he is crowned. How awesome is the sight, our radiant King of light. Be still, for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And welcome as we gather in faith in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the grace and peace of God, who is Father, the love of Jesus the Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And to prepare ourselves to celebrate the wonderful mystery of God's love for us in our next breath this morning, let's call to mind our own sinfulness and brokenness. Lord Jesus, you came that we may have life and have life to the full. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon, you bring peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Do not forget that you had no Christ and were excluded from membership of Israel. Aliens with no part in the covenants with their promise. <clears throat> you were immersed in this world without hope and without God. But now in Christ Jesus, you that used to be so far apart from us have been brought very close by the blood of Christ. For he is the peace between us and has made the two into one and broken down the barrier we used to keep them apart, actually destroying in his own person the hostility caused by the rules and decrees of the Lord. This was to create one single new man in himself, out of the two of them, and by restoring peace through the cross, to unite them both in a single body and reconcile them with God. In his own person, he killed the hostility. Later, he came to bring the good news of peace, peace to who you are worth, were far away and peace to those who were near at hand. Through him, both of us have, in the one spirit, our way to come to the Father. So you are no longer aliens or foreign visitors. You are citizens like all the saints and part of God's household. You are part of a building that has the apostles and prophets for its main cornerstone. As every structure is aligned on him, all grow into one holy temple in the Lord, and you too in him are being built into a house where God lives in the spirit. The word of the Lord. The Lord speaks peace to his people. I will hear what the Lord God has to say, a voice that speaks of peace. 
His help is near for those who fear him, and his glory will dwell in our land. Mercy and faithfulness have met. Justice and peace have embraced. Faithfulness shall spring from the earth, and justice look down from heaven. The Lord will make us prosper, and our earth shall yield its fruit. Justice shall march before him, and peace shall follow his steps. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are those who, with a noble and generous heart, take the word of God to themselves and yield a harvest through their perseverance. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, See that you're dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like men waiting for their master to return from the wedding feast, ready to open the door as soon as he comes and knocks. Happy those servants whom the master find awake when he comes. I tell you solemnly, he will put on an apron, sit them down at table, and wait on them. It may be in the second watch he comes, or in the third, but happy those servants if he finds them ready. The Gospel of the Lord. The one who knocks in the door is someone who wants to serve those who are awake when he comes and knocks, those who are ready to open the door to him. Even though he's the master of the household, you know, even though we would expect that he's the one that should be served, yet if the door is open to him, he will put on an apron, he will sit the servants down at the table. He will look after them. He will prepare a meal for them. He will serve them. Jesus, in that beautiful parable, given us an image of what, of giving us an image of how he wants to relate to you and me today. In the Gospel of St. Luke, he talks about, he come, that Jesus speaks about, he comes as one who serves, not to be served. In John's Gospel, we find that same Jesus getting down and washing the feet of his disciples, that act of service. Yet if he is to serve as he desires, then he needs us to be open to his presence. He needs us to be open to his will. In the gospel reading, we are to have our lamps lit. We are to be ready, awake to his coming at all times. That gospel reading would speak about us opening the door, opening the door so that he can serve, so that he can serve us in ways, and he's going to serve us in ways today that are going to surprise us. So let's get ready for the surprise of the risen Lord serving us today. Let's be open to that surprise. Let us bring all our prayers and our needs to the Father 
in our prayer this morning. Let us pray that we may be open to the God who comes to us today, that we may open the door to his loving presence. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for all who lead us in government and all government leaders, that they will always speak the truth, that they will act with justice, that they will always seek the common good and make decisions to keep us safe. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for all those who are suffering in the world because of earthquake and famine, for all those who are starving, for all those who are homeless, all those who seek security for themselves and their families, all those who seek a place to live. Let us pray that we may welcome them, that we may be open to giving them every support and help that they need at this time. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for all those who are worried and anxious and afraid and lonely this morning, all those who are isolated, all those who feel alone, all those who are worried. Let us ask God's blessing on them. Lord, hear us. For all doctors and nurses and carers, that they may be protected, that they may be kept safe, that they may have wonderful compassion and gentle hands. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for all our young people, that they may be kept safe, that they may grow in wisdom and in love. Lord, hear us. God, our Father, these are prayers. We present them to you, knowing that you only give us the best. For we ask them all through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Friends, let us pray that our sacrifice this morning may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father, and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name, and we pray the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, God, who love the human race and who always walk with us in the journey of life. Blessed who is your Son present among us when we are gathered by his love and when it's once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and he breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine 
that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Then he said to them, Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and forever among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope, Noel our Bishop, with all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of all our brothers and sisters, inspiring us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Anne, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. And so at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us from everything that is evil. Grant peace in our day. That with the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin, safe from every distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God,
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter onto my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Behold, the eyes of the Lord are in those who fear him, who hope in his merciful love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. 
never permit me to be separated from you. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise, all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Let us pray. Grant, Lord, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give us in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless and keep you safe today, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. And have a good day, everyone. Take my hands and make them as your own, and use them for your kingdom here on earth. Consecrate them to your care, anoint them for your service where you may need your gospel to be sown. Take my hands, they speak now for my heart, and by their actions they will show their love. Guard them on their daily course, be their strength and guiding force to ever serve the Trinity above. Take my hands, take my hands.